Yes, yeah, your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of my two Satoshis. Shout out to all my Woodstock vets out there. <laughs> AUAG, Go Bug wanted me to play the Jimi Hendrix Star Spangled Banner. Thanks for the song request today. What's going on, people? Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to be looking at something out of CoinGate. We got something out of CoinGate. We got something out of NewsBTC. We got something out of Cointelegraph. The Coin Telegraph article is just basically talking about this drop, man. We saw prices below 6,500 uh, late last night. I'm going to talk about this. There are a few things that we could possibly come to a conclusion as to why this is happening. Because some theories says that uh, we're seeing tax harvesting now. I mean, of, of course, initially it was probably because of the whole FOMO kind of wearing off from what President Xi said about blockchain, not Bitcoin. Um, and we had that pump up 3,000 points. But maybe now we're seeing tax harvesting coin going on now to where people can lock in those losses for the year or gains or whatever you want to call them. You can look at them either way. I mean, we are, we're up almost 90%, up about 80-something percent at this point year to date. But we know everyone didn't get in at that bottom. So you may have some people taking some L's here. I'm going to lock those in so they can definitely roll those over into next year. So we're going to take a look at that and uh, see see what you guys feel about that whole theory. I mean, it, it was applicable years ago for sure. I talked about it in 2018. I said we will see um, a sell-off, you know, kind of toward the end of the year. But I didn't think we would see one this fast. I thought maybe after Thanksgiving, um, maybe we would see something like this. But... Again, we'll take a look at it. Also, out of CoinGate, we've got uh, BitMEX insurance fund soars to all-time high. Uh, we'll take a look at what this means and uh, if this has any leading indicator for us in regards to Bitcoin price move maybe up again. And then lastly, the Fear and Greed Index. I know I've covered this on my channel before, the Fear and Greed Index. Well, right now, it is printing extreme fear. Yet another thing. Uh, today's episode is kind of really price oriented or uh, Bitcoin price sentiment oriented. So we're going to look into this article as well and uh, get your feedback on it. I'll give you my two Satoshis on it as well. But you know the routine. Make sure you click the thumbs up, losers. Click the thumbs down and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to click that notification bell to receive more videos like this. And before we get started, also want to give your attention to a new sponsor of mine. A new exchange going at BitMEX looking to take the throne away from BitMEX Dudex. They have a new leveraged exchange. Um, definitely want to check it out because they have some great incentives for signing up. So I want you guys to use the link in the description of this video. I also pin it. But you can earn up to $70 if you sign up. Uh, just look at the terms and conditions with that. But leveraged trading is up to I think 100x. They only have Bitcoin right now. Check them out and earn you some free money and trade uh, on leverage they are fair and transparent no rollbacks and no trading against customers 24 7 customer support unlike bitmex and no kyc check them out at dudex.com and shout out to moon lambo that's shop moonlambo.com if you guys ever need some crypto apparel you need to go there first you can also save 10 percent if you use the word crypto blood 10 at checkout so let's go ahead and take a look at the heat map for today we had a nice bounce off the 64 65 level nice v-shaped recovery on the one hour chart let's see if we can hold that but bitcoin is currently at 7200 or 18 bucks up two percent right now ethereum is up half a percent to 147 bucks we've got eos also up slightly to two dollars and 56 cents binance down 1.2 percent to 15 dollars and 57 cents we've got litecoin down slightly one percent to forty six dollars and eighty four cents xrp is also down two point seven percent and man i don't know what's going on with tezos but it's down nine point six percent right now to one dollar and twenty two cents and if we look at this chart guys yes a bounce right off of sixty five hundred and this is off of coinbase some exchanges did see prices trade below sixty four hundred or 65 into the 6400 range but on coinbase we did not see that you know we are in between this range here so we could possibly we've seen this before this is what markets do we could see a range bound here for a little while until we figure out if we're going to go ahead and make a move higher this move off the lows was a pretty extreme one we're talking about a 12 percent bounce off the lows uh, from that move so that's pretty extreme 
Um, we'll have to see what happens from here. And so at this point, I would say I would become bullish now if we got back above 6,400, this area right here. You know, was this area, but since we broke this 7,400 right here, previous support becomes future resistance. Now any move above, uh, any substantial move above 7,400 would turn me uh, bullish with Bitcoin's price. And the next target would of course be 8300 which is honestly not far-fetched I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. you know how bitcoin moves people and i don't want to i'm not going to show you guys the algo today because i don't want to give away our position but maybe i'll update you guys in a couple of days with that trade or those two trades we have on the table with the algo and if you guys want to sign up for the algo you always can cryptoblood.io you guys can save 25 percent if you use the word insta profit at checkout for bitmax algos that's on all three packages so steep discounts already applied to the six and 12 month packages. So you get an additional 25% off those too. Check us out. Cryptoblood.io for that. All performance is transparent there for you to see and monthly reports available. Now, as far as Bitcoin and its price drop, let's take a look at some of these theories and explanations about what's going on here in the crypto game. As I stated earlier, Bitcoin dropped to within $15 of the $6,500 range on November 25th after another day of significant losses obliterated previous support levels and data from coin 360 shows that bitcoin usd bounced off the significant 6500 dollars barrier having fallen seven percent in the last 24 hours cryptocurrency's weekly downturn currently stands at more than 20 percent versus the same point last week while monthly investors have taken a 30 percent hit on holdings as what was reported earlier current moves are essentially in deciding whether bulls have a chance to preserve influence if not little remains in the way of bitcoin dropping as low as 2500 ah, i don't think it'll go that low traders will be keenly eyeing the 6500 level though as this figure represents assumed cutoff point for minor profitability previously analysts had claimed miners would defend the price should we fall within that range now I will, I will have to say i'm just gonna pause there because look i've been in you know trading and, and participating in this crypto game for a while that is a point that you will start to get some resistance uh back and push back from now that doesn't mean it's there's no elasticity there there's definitely some some elasticity in that in that price range where miners are breaking even or losing money i've seen it where bitcoin is traded below that point essentially miners losing money for a month or two so it can trade below there but normally it won't trade below there for too long so you know there are theories all over the place uh going one from you know the whole china exchange crackdown to one involving the united states as tour de meester noted u.s investors could be deliberately forcing the market lower in order to record negative performance for their end of year tax obligations short-term performance could also improve thanks to the gap in the cme's group bitcoin's futures as noted when futures begin trading at a different price to that at which they closed their previous session bitcoin tends to fill in the resulting vacuum later that blank spot currently sits around seventy three hundred dollars so we'll see um kind of what happens all coins are down getting hit pretty hard as well they've bounced back a little bit though today um a decent amount of them but man eth eth has been hit extra hard guys it fell 9.8 percent to hit 136 dollars its lowest price since april 1st of this year and litecoin seems to have uh, managed to kind of stave off the worst of the bear sentiment so far let's hope that uh they can keep that momentum going but again you know just going back to the point about tax harvesting that definitely plays a part right now i think at this point for sure people are selling to lock in those losses but i think it was more of a reactionary thing i didn't i don't think it caused it i think the cause of this was the market finally realizing there was not enough momentum to keep that rally off the fomo from a month or so almost ago when president g talked about blockchain uh being you know a a technology that they're interested in and will be uh getting behind and everyone in the market just took that as bitcoin somehow i think the markets pulled back from off of that euphoria and realization that that had nothing to do with cryptocurrencies and bitcoin in particular so that was the catalyst in my opinion and then from there Maybe people realize like, hey, this is a great opportunity to maybe, uh, you know, lock in some of those losses. And so you'll probably see that 
going into uh, the end of the year. I personally thought we would see a holiday rally here in the States, uh, typically around Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving. People talk about Bitcoin and crypto at the family dinner table. But this year might be slightly different. I don't think the appetite for that, you know, by the average consumer to get into Bitcoin, I don't think it's there yet. I think they're still turned off if they haven't bought any. And I think the ones that did buy are are still hurting. They, those scars have not healed. And so they're not getting in anytime soon. Okay, so that kind of leaves us kind of in a quandary, in a, in a situation where we're in limbo. We're in limbo. So we'll have to see what happens. I was actually, it's funny, I was at a dinner, family dinner last night. And uh, uh, one of the family members didn't even really know what Bitcoin was. He's like, what's Bitcoin? So you still have a decent amount. When I say decent, I mean a majority of the population still don't know what Bitcoin is um, and don't have a concept of it fully. They don't they don't know how to wrap their heads around it. So, you know, you can look at it two ways. You can look at that as a potential for growth. Absolutely. Total total addressable market um, is huge still. But uh, we just have to remember that not everyone is in cryptos, people. Not yet. Not yet. Second article out of CoinGate. It's about BitMEX's insurance fund, which soars to all-time high. What does this mean for Bitcoin? What does this mean for the crypto markets? What does this mean for the bulls and the bears? The BitMEX insurance fund holds over 32,000 Bitcoin as of November 24th, representing a total of approximate $216 million at a current rate of 6 point six thousand usd per bitcoin the slight increase from thirty one thousand bitcoin in august has pushed the insurance fund to its all-time high bitcoin value representing over 80 percent increase in the derivatives exchanges insurance fund so what is the bitmax insurance fund all about well this insurance fund is a collection by the exchange to allow an instant settlement of unfulfilled liquidation orders the crypto derivatives exchange does not require traders with negative balances to immediately pay up once their leveraged trade is liquidated on the platform. So here is where the exchange insurance fund comes into play. The insurance fund is issued or used to pay off the winning trade instantly, ensuring the profit is paid to the trader. Once the liquidation or negative trader pays up, the money is sent back to the fund. If not paid, then the insurance fund will have played its role in ensuring all profits are paid out. So dig this, people. BitMEX holds over 0.15% of all Bitcoin. Wow. So on November 25th, close to 60 million worth of XBTC contracts were liquidated. Long contracts having the bulk of the liquidations at 56 million and 2.2 million for the short position. So that kind of tells me, at least for the long traders, the bulls, They've been wiped out. They've been kind of cleared out. Okay, now it's time for the shift to happen. Now it's time for the um, short position to cover or close their trades. So when you when you short in a market, guys, in order to take profit on that, you have to basically buy back the short or cover the short. That does create buying pressure in the markets. And with the combination of the longs kind of wiped out, they're going to probably try to get back in at somewhere around these levels, 6,500, somewhere around here. So I'm thinking those two combinations will uh, kind of start. And we may have already seen it. You know, this article was uh, written last night. So the bounce off of 6,500 was really strong. I showed you guys it was a 12% bounce off of those lows. So that's a strong move to indicate maybe we are seeing a turnaround in the markets. Let's see what happens with that. In addition to um you know the whole liquidation situation on bitmex and the derivatives we also have the fear and greed index which is at pretty much extreme fear at 23 right now um out of zero to 100 so that kind of shows us that that also may be an indication that we're near bottoms now this isn't um by no means does this give us precise entry on the markets but it should give you a gauge 
um, on what's going on sentiment wise in the crypto scene. So the Bitcoin fear index greed recently printed a 23, which is on the extreme fear side of the oscillating indicator. As a side note, while this reading may seem entirely arbitrary, especially considering the bullish momentum Bitcoin has experienced in the first half of 2019, the index readings are backed by data. The website that hosts the index claims it analyzes a fair mix of volatility, market momentum and volume, social media trends, surveys, dominance and Google trends to get the gist of how cryptocurrency investors are faring. The reading of 23 thus extreme fear are relevant because many believe that emotions drive markets. They surely do, especially in the long term and in especially in the cryptocurrency market. And so another analyst by the name of Salsa noted that Bitcoin and Ethereum's three day charts printed the same extremely bullish candle pattern, a swing failure pattern below major liquidity pools on the three day time frame. He also noted that this contributes to the idea that Bitcoin bottom on a macro scale. So we'll have to see. Um, I'm giving you guys a couple of different scenarios, a couple of different data points and ways to look at this to formulate whether or not a bottom has set in. That's how you should look at it. It shouldn't be off of one thing and one thing only. It should be a set of data points or sources you go to to figure out where the where to put the bids in to start buying. Remember, you never buy at the highs. These are the times you buy when when people are giving up. You got people on online, this BitLord dude on Twitter talking about, I'm quitting if we go any lower. And when you see that type of noob type of behavior, I don't care how many followers you have. When you see that type of behavior and, and type of sentiment, that's when you start buying. That's when you start buying. So um, hope you guys take some of this information and it, it, it helps you kind of make a decision on if you want to put some more dry powder in or not. But uh, that's pretty much it for today, ladies and gents. I want you guys to definitely give a shout out to my man AUAG Goldbug for the song request, Jimi Hendrix, Star Spangled Banner. It's your boy Crypto Blood. I want you guys to definitely like, share, and subscribe. And click that bell to be notified about unbiased crypto news reported by yours truly, Crypto Blood. Let's rock out to this Hendrix. Holler! <laughs>